Bacterial communities on people's skin seem to be fairly unique uh, for any given individual in that uh, in a previous work we saw that only about 13% of the bacteria on uh, one person's hands were shared by any other person. The idea was is that as a person uses their mouse, they leave bacteria on it and we, what we did is we sampled the surface of the mouse and looked at the bacteria that remained on it after somebody had used it. Um, the idea was not so much a direct forensic application of, our, of the bacterial community analysis methods that we use, but just to show that it would be possible, for instance, to collect bacteria off the surface of an object and off the surface of a person and see if they can be linked together by, their similarity, by the similarity in the bacterial communities. And that was the whole kind of the idea behind the study is that you leave, apparently we leave bacteria all over and these bacteria are persistent. And is that, is there, do enough members of the community bacteria on your hand persist long enough where you can go back sometime later, sample that surface, and then link it back to a, an individual. Basically what it entailed is just sampling people's hands and then their keyboards that they used quite often and then their computer mice. Um, sequencing some of the bacterial DNA on, from the hands and the, and the uh, computer keyboard surfaces to see if those communities were more similar for a keyboard and its owner than rather between keyboards or different individuals. And it turns out actually that bacterial communities on keyboards are specific for their, more specific or more related to their owner rather than the keyboards used by other people, uh, either in a public setting or even private keyboards. So this is a large scale version of the DNA extraction kit that we use in this study. And basically what this is, what we do is we put the sample in a tube like this and in here there is a detergent and a couple other things and we just shake it like this for about 10 minutes and it breaks the bacterial cells open and releases the DNA into the solution. We take this solution out and then make successive transfers into a bunch of different types of uh, reagents. And then in the end, what happens is, although this isn't full, we just have a tube that's got clear liquid in it and is full of DNA. And that's the material we use to do our analysis with. I, wanna read, I do wanna stress though that this technique is not ready for any forensics lab at this point. It was just a proof of concept to see, one, if we could do it, and two, you know, what would the results look like? Is it, you know, how much accuracy do we have in our, in our ability to link an object that's touched by one person with that person?